Hey everyone, Chris Mack presents today with Wolverine Issue 1. The print date on this was November 1988. And I initially wanted to use my comic version, but when I got it, it was signed by Lynn Wayne, so there was no way in hell I was going to pull that out of the Mylar bag to review it. So I have a digital. I thought about doing a screen record, but the last one that I did, it just didn't work out too well. I can't manipulate the pages very well instead of being able to get up and close and personal with my other camera. So we're using a smartphone to record on a smart tablet. <laughs> the print date, as I just said, was November of 1988. The creators on this was Chris Claremont writing, John Basima pencils, Al Williamson inker, Tom Orzanowski doing the lettering, Glynis Oliver was the colorist, and Bob Harris was the editor, and Tom DeFalco was editor-in-chief. So right here off the bat, we get an all-star cast on this book. This is separate from the miniseries that first came out with Frank Miller and Claremont. And I'm glad that they did this. This follows shortly after uh, the fall of the mutants when the X-Men are presumed dead and after being in Texas. And so Wolverine's kind of running under the, the radar here in Madripoor. We are introduced to this horrible looking human being named uh, Banapur Khan, and I like how we get the third party, or the third party, the uh, third person narrative of Logan saying Fatso calls himself Banapur Khan, Prince of Pirates. Mostly his riffraff out outfit preys on boat people, refugees fleeing Cambodia and Vietnam, stripping them of everything they possess of value. <laughs> and so we can see these are people that the pirates have kidnapped. And this man here that we saw kicking just a moment ago was the captain of the ship that they hijacked was actually an airplane. He is not going to go down without a fight. But sadly, these people have no scruples or morals. And to get around the comic code, there's this saying that says, show don't tell or the, uh, the less is better. So instead of you know seeing a straight up gruesome beheading, the uh, what do you call it? silhouette here is just much worse because then your imagination runs with it and ugh, you can just see what type of people these pirates are logan continues to say half a century ago when the dutch ruled this neighborhood they built an emergency airstrip on telem bang and all that time no one had ever used it until eight days ago when sovereign flight 49 disappeared 21 crew, 180 passengers. Most of them on my help. First thing I found after coming ashore was the mass grave. And look at these colors. Just that lack thereof just really adds to the grittiness of this book. As you see Wolverine spying on this guy that's supposed to be doing his job, but they think that they are all that in a bag of chips. Yes, that's an old saying. So they're not really paying attention to what's going on. And again, for a number one, what I like here is that Logan is not really shown yet. We just see him, bits of him attacking. Pirates are careless and cocky. They don't expect trouble. And so we see him traversing, just passing the trip wires and whatnot, and taking out all the guards to save these poor souls whose fate without Logan's help would have been quite he was sent here because he's looking for an individual named uh, Kojima, who apparently was um, supposed to meet with some contacts of Madripoor. He was under the employ of Wolverine's love, Medico. Alex Hagai says, Kojima, can you hear me? Who speaks? I know that voice. It's Logan. Liar. A cheap trick, and I will not be deceived. Logan is dead. Consider me a ghost. But before there's anything further, we finally get the reveal of Logan as um, the con character bursts in. And I love how Logan, we finally get the reveal of him in this Madripoor kind of camouflage uniform, the all black. Speaking of which, on the side note, I've gone over the figure this is based on, so check it out. And if you're wondering why that Marvel Legends figure, the retro one, has that black shading on his eyes, it's because of. John Basimo's choice to make it look shadowed and very noir in a sense. And he goes, talk is cheap, bud. You want my hide? Take it if you can. 
my name's Logan, but most people know me as Wolverine. I am the best there is at what I do. But what I do best isn't very nice. <clears throat> and so we see Logan just take on this crowd, these whole plethora of pirates. And Logan's just like the bullets burn like fire. Would have killed anyone else? They just make me mad. <laughs> now, again, this is before we got a whole lot of backstory on Wolverine even before the Barry Smith, uh, Barry Windsor Smith's Weapon X. So Logan's talking about, and this is what I liked about Claremont is he always gave uh, power sets and kind of a thought process. He goes, you see, I'm a mutant born with a parahuman super efficient healing factor that can deal with any illness or poison or wound. It makes me way stronger, faster, tougher, and makes my senses keener than any animal. In addition, my bones are laced with adamantium, the strongest metal known, so they are virtually unbreakable. And then I just like how he says, I don't know how it's happened or who's responsible, and I don't much care. And all the while, the visual storytelling is leading to your eye and just seeing the strength and raw power of Wolverine. And this is around the time that he still talks about how his claws are essentially, um, right here he goes, my claws, six of them, three in each hand, extending from biotic houses and planted in my forearms. It wasn't until Fatal Attractions in the 90s that we found out that his claws were part of them. Lynn Wayne's original idea for this was for the bones to be uh, part of the gloves, but I think it was Claremont that suggested that they put them inside them. And so I just like how Wolverine's origins changed over the years, and it just continues to add to his mythos. So this book, this is not very X-Men oriented. This is what I like about the early Wolverine solo series, is it was very much separate. As we're in the 90s, we kind of started to merge with Professor X and Jubilee, Gambit, etc., so forth. And those are great stories. But here, this is Logan on his own and seeing what type of person he is when he's not restrained. X-Men. And I love how Logan, or Khan here, he goes, is anyone there? This isn't funny. Stop fooling about and answer me. And just this nice, what do you call it, coming out of the fog. So in a sense, this book feels like a horror story. And the other important thing about this book, once we get the heartbreaking of Kojima, we find out that the, the thing he was going for from America was this thing called the Black Blade. And it's being carried by a courier, who we find out is Lizney, Liz, Lindsay McCobb, who apparently Logan knows along with Jessica Drew. So he has to go into disguise. And what I was getting at is this is also the first appearance of Patch and Logan dons it so that people like Lindsay don't recognize him and he can move about freely to do what he needs done. And just the way this book, this is like the way you want a number one to be. It leads up, has action, its own story arc. Like I want to just grab my Wolverine issue two and go directly over it right after this book because it's so great the way that Patch Lindsay and Jessica Drew work together in these early issues, and with especially with Tiger Tiger, and then Joe Fix It comes later into the series. Absolutely amazing work. I don't want to give any more away. I want you guys to go support your local comic shop or wherever it is like to get your comics and action figures and grab this series, either in the separate single issues like this, which these earlier ones are getting harder and harder to find, or collected trade. It is definitely worth it if you're a huge Wolverine fan and love the classic Claremont storytelling style. Now, if you've enjoyed this review, I really appreciate it. Take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel. Club channel. I'm still getting over that. Helps the channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little adamantium bell next, subscribe. That way, as I get to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and I love talking with you on hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or the socials, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. And with all that said, hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading. And happy hunting, everyone.